Welcome everyone to another CUDA worksheet tutorial. We are taking on rational expressions today. Rational, talking about ratios, fractions, expressions, meaning no equal sign. Let's get started. It says first, state the excluded values for each. So when you're dealing with rational expressions, one of the things you can do is simplify. So uh, in, in this example, I'm not going to, that's not part of the process for this problem, but you can simplify so we could cross out this, this x and we could make this a squared we could cross off this make it five make that one because that's how you simplify we're looking for common factors 60 goes into or sorry 12 goes into 65 times 12 goes into 12 one time and then x goes into x squared or x cubed one time but we can cross it off so we're left with if we simplify five uh x squared and that's it over one but we don't need that okay now the excluded values though are always before you simplify. Let me uh, write that down. So excluded values star before you simplify, before simplification. You always wanna make sure you are looking at excluded values before simplification. So let's rewind. We rewind here and we're looking here for excluded values. We're looking for values that make something uh, an expression go undefined. Well, how do you get an answer that's undefined? The only way you can get an answer that's undefined is if you divide by zero. This will make something, an expression, become undefined. You can't divide by zero, so we have to exclude those values. So, anytime we're looking for excluded values, we just take whatever's in the denominator. If there's a variable, in this case there is a variable, and we're gonna set it equal to zero. So we say 12x equals zero. Now I know what you're thinking. Why would we set it equal to zero if we can't divide by zero? Well, we're looking for which values are excluded. This kind of gives us an indication of what we need to avoid. So we solve for x, okay? So we set it equal to zero, that was step one. Set equal to zero, that's step one. On the denominator, if there's a variable, okay? And then step two, we solve. So once we do this, we're gonna cancel out that. We get zero divided by 12, x equals zero. So that is the excluded value. So what that means is, if we were writing the domain, which I'm sure you guys are gonna be required to do in your class, our domain would be all real numbers. We always assume all reals, except where there's an excluded value. So then we can say x cannot equal zero. Again, we set x equal to that, the number equal to that, so we can find what's excluded, but in the domain, you can't include it. That would be our final answer for domain. Again, it's just asking for the excluded value for this problem, so you can ignore that, but I think that's important to know because I think we're gonna be doing that later. But our excluded value here is gonna be zero. X equals zero is our excluded value. This one, same deal. We're just gonna take this value here, set it equal to zero, 100V equal to zero. Divide by 100 to get V by itself, and we get V equals zero. That is our excluded value. That will make the expression become undefined. We don't have to simplify. We just have to find that excluded value for this one. Now, anytime it's like this, this is not good. Well, it's not terrible, but we're gonna have to take a couple extra steps. Remember, the first step is set it equal to zero. Minus 21 equal to zero. Then we have to solve. Well, this one requires factoring to solve, so I'm gonna to have to put it in parentheses like this. Equals zero. I'm gonna put an M, I'm gonna put an M. And now I have to look at factors of negative 21 that add up to positive four. Well, that's gonna be seven and three. Seven, three. And the seven needs to be positive because this term is positive, and the three is gonna be negative. So, what values will make this expression go to zero? in the denominator. Well, m equals three, and then m equals negative seven. If we input those two, that will make the denominator equal zero, which we can't have. These are the excluded values here. So those are excluded values. Uh, let's do one more, maybe uh, number five. This one's a little bit different. So here we can factor out a GCF. Uh, I believe it's five. Yep, that's the biggest one we have there. So we're gonna factor out the five. Well, first, let's set it equal to zero. Make it easier for everyone. We have five, and we have five x minus eight equals zero. Okay, we don't really care about the five. 
that one doesn't really affect it, but we do care about the x. So we want to know, okay, what will make this parenthesis equals zero? So we say 5x minus 8 equals zero. 5x equals 8. x equals 8 over 5. And that's our excluded value for number 5. Let's move on to the next part. It says simplify each and state the excluded value. Okay, so this is the process I was talking about earlier. Now, they really should put this excluded value portion first because we have to do that before simplification. So we're going to do that first. So we're going to take this and we're going to simplify it. Or set it equal to zero, sorry. 8 equals zero. So we need to put it into two parentheses again. We have p, p, and looks like 4 and 2 equals 0. And now we have p equals negative 2 and negative 4. So these are the excluded values right here. So p and negative 2 are excluded values. We're done with that step. Now, because we've already factored it, we're going to use this to our advantage because we need this for the simplify step. So we are going to rewrite this factored right there. So what are the values? We're going to write p plus 2 and then p plus 4. That's the denominator just written a little differently. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write the top p plus 4. Okay, so this and this are the same. One is just factored in the bottom and we've already found the excluded values. Don't have to worry about that anymore. But now what we're doing here is we're looking to see where we can cancel and simplify. So technically we could put this in parentheses and we can cancel out this p plus 4 with this p plus 4 in the top. Remember, we only can cancel if everything's multiplication. This whole thing in the top is p plus 4, so it matches with the bottom, which is being multiplied by p plus 2, so we can cancel it. What are we left with? Well, we're left with 1 over p plus 2, and that's going to become our final answer. So here's our final answer with the excluded values right here. All right, let's do another one. Um, let's do number 10. So number 10, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna simplify the bottom. Now, some people make a mistake like, oh, I need to simplify this to see excluded values. I need to set this equal to zero. You do not, it's only the denominator you need to set equal to zero. So we don't need to set this equal to, uh, to zero. We will need to factor that later, but we don't need to set it equal to zero to find excluded values. This we do, the denominator. So we have p squared my, uh, plus p minus two equals zero. So we're gonna put our parentheses, do this whole thing again, p, p, for that term, then we have the two, and I'm gonna do a plus two minus one, negative one times positive two give me negative two, and then positive two minus one gives me a positive one, which is the coefficient there. So what are my excluded values? P equals one and negative two. Those are my excluded values. I'll make those in green. Okay, now I'm gonna keep that factored in the bottom, P minus one, P plus two. Now what I need to do is I also need to factor the top. So let me do that in a different color. Let's do that in pink. So I'm gonna factor the top. And now I have the same thing. I have to look for factors of P squared, that's P and P, and then factors of negative 10 that add up to negative three. Well, that's negative five and positive two. Last step is canceling. We wanna look for things that we see in the, the, the same in the top and bottom, that's P plus two. P plus two, we can cancel. What are we left with? We're left with P minus five over P minus one. Okay, that's that second section. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, it's just more of this, so perfect. Okay, so let's do a couple more. Let's look for a more complicated one. Um, here's a good one, let's do number 15. It has some division. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the keep change flip. We're gonna keep this the same because it's division. We're gonna change this to multiplication. And let me write keep here, keep, change that to multiplication and we are going to flip this because dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So let's go ahead and keep this. So I'm gonna rewrite V minus seven, V plus eight, V plus eight, V minus 10. Okay, I'm gonna change this to multiplication and I'm gonna flip this, V minus 10, over one. Now, since I'm, it's all multiplication, 
I'm gonna put that in parentheses because that's like a little group together. And now I'm looking for anything I can cancel. Right away, you should see V plus eight, V plus eight, we can get rid of that. V minus 10, we can cancel with that since that's in the top in its multiplication. And then what are we left with? We're only left with V minus seven over one, which we can just write as V minus seven. Okay, you're probably wondering, okay, Mr. West, what you just did is you forgot to do the excluded values. So what I need to do here is I need to look for excluded values before I simplify, remember? So let's go ahead and look at those. Remember, these were excluded values here. And then I gotta consider this one even before I flip it. So my excluded values, I set it equal to zero. V plus eight times V minus 10 equal to zero. And then I also have this V minus 10 equal to zero. I don't need the parentheses there actually. Okay, so here it would be V equals negative eight and positive 10. This would be plus 10 plus 10. I would get V equals positive 10. So you can see my excluded values are gonna be just negative eight and 10. I already have 10 listed there. So my excluded values, negative eight, 10, my finance, uh, final simplified answer is gonna be V minus seven. And that's how I do that one. Maybe we can look for a more challenging one. Let's go to number 22 and we'll call this our last one. Yeah, that's, uh, or should we do number 24? Let's do number 26 actually. This one looks like the toughest one. So lots going on here. Is there one with division? No. Uh, I'm gonna do number 23. I think number 23, just because the keep change flip rule is gonna be a little bit more complicated. Unless you know what, I'll do both. If you wanna just watch 23, that's fine, but I'm gonna do both of these. Okay, keep change flip, keep this, change this to multiplication, and I'm gonna flip this guy. Okay, now before I do the keep change flip, what I should do here is set all the denominators equal to zero. So 5p squared equals zero. I'm gonna divide by five and take the square root. So we have p squared equals zero divided by five, that's zero. p squared equals zero, take the square root. I get p equals zero. That's one of my excluded values. I also have to do 5p cubed minus 35p squared equals zero. So let me go ahead and simplify this. I'm gonna factor out a p squared in front. Ah, five p squared in front. I'm left with p minus seven equals zero. Now, once you do this, you get p equals zero. That will, right here, that's that one. And then p equals seven. So we have three values, actually it's only two. We have p equals zero and seven that are our excluded values. Now let's proceed from here. Here we have one over five p squared. We're gonna leave that. Now we're gonna flip. So we have five, and I'm just gonna use this factored form right here. We already factored it, so I'm just gonna write that. Five p squared, after I flip it, p minus seven. And then I need to factor this top portion here. Let me do that in uh, light purple. So this I need to factor. So then I have, I'm gonna factor out a nine, and P minus, what is that, nine times four? It's 36. Okay, so now I'm ready to simplify. I can cancel the five P squared and five P squared. I can't do anything with anything else, so my final answer is gonna be P minus seven over nine times P minus four, and I'm done. That is my final answer for that problem. Okay, now we're gonna do the last one. Again, if you're comfortable, go ahead and leave. I'm not asking you to stay, but I'm gonna do one more for you. Lots going on here. First thing we gotta do is we have to find the excluded values here and here. So I'm gonna factor out, uh, let's see, 40x squared of this one, and that's gonna give me 2x minus, that's false, it's just gonna be x. I don't know where it came up with two. X minus two. There we go, there's that one. It has to be equal to zero. So our excluded value is gonna be x equals zero from this, and then x equals positive two. This one, still gotta factor this one out, so we have six, and then we have x plus five. This excluded value is gonna be x equals negative five only. So we have three excluded values for this one. We have zero, we have two, and we have, I'm gonna put it right here, his buddy five. Uh, false, that's negative five. So we have negative five. These are our excluded values. Now we are ready to proceed by factoring and then simplifying slash canceling. So let's go ahead and look at the top. 
And we're gonna factor out the top here. We're gonna have, I'm gonna just do it right above here. I'm gonna do the top in pink and the bottom in green. I'm gonna factor out a 10 X. We're gonna be left with X minus two. And then when I factor out, let's do four, 16. Does 16 go into 80? I think it might. So let me just quick get my calculator out. Sorry, sometimes when you're talking and working at the same time, it's hard to do that simple math in your head. So we do 80 divided by 16, I get five, I knew it. So we have 16 X squared, we're gonna factor out. What is X plus five? And then that is good. That's in our top. Now let's work on the bottom. I'm gonna move this up, lasso it up. Okay, now I'm gonna do, in green I said, I already said that. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna just, I already factored it out. We have 40 X squared, X minus two times, and then we have six times X plus five. I don't know if you hear that chainsaw, but bad timing. So I'm gonna cancel out the X plus five, X minus two. I'm gonna cancel out this 40 with that 10, and I'm gonna be left with four on the bottom. This X squared with that X. Okay, so this is completely gone on the top. And then what else can I cancel? I can cancel this six with that reduce, and that's gonna give me three and eight. And I can cancel this X with one of these X's, so now in the top I have eight X, in the bottom I have four times three, uh, and that's it. So I'm gonna have, oh I forgot to cancel the four with the eight, four with the eight leaving a two, so I have two X over three, and that's the simplified version with zero, two, and negative five as my excluded values. There's my final answer, hope you guys enjoyed this video, hope this was helpful, and I look forward to seeing you next time on West Explains Best. See you soon. Chainsaw running.